This is David with the Roanoke County Public Library, and this video is getting started with Zoom. And this video is for people who want to learn how to participate in a Zoom meeting, or maybe you have participated in one or two meetings and want to know a little more about the environment and what all those settings are about. So you've been invited. So when you've been invited to a Zoom meeting, you're going to receive a link either in your email or by text and it's going to be a very long link that you'll have to click on. There could be a password involved if it's been password protected, so you may want to take note of that. So you'll have to put in that password in order to access the meeting. But by and large, you're just going to click on that link. It's going to open up in your browser. And from there, if it's the first time you've ever participated in Zoom, you're going to be prompted to download the app. So it has to load up. And then once it's loaded, you will have to accept the invitation and go into the meeting itself. And once you're inside, you're going to see a screen like this. This is a gallery view. So everybody who's participating is going to have a separate little window there in the middle of the screen. And there's all kinds of little settings around the edges of the screen. And I'm going to talk about each of those sections so you have a better idea of what all those do. Over there on the top right of the screen, you're going to see the view button. It toggles two different views that Zoom has, a speaker view and a gallery view. The gallery view is what we saw on the previous screen, where you actually have a separate box for each uh, participant in the meeting. But you can also click on speaker view, and that only shows one person at a time, and it's going to show the person who is currently speaking. And then over next to that is a little squarish icon that you can click on to go into full screen mode. So the Zoom meeting window takes up the entire screen on your device. Then at the bottom left are some important settings, the audio and video settings. The main thing to look for is that these are turned on. As you can see in this a picture, I have the audio on, but the video is off. And that's indicated by the red stripe across the icon. So if people can't hear you or they can't see you, Look at these icons first and make sure both of these are turned on. The red stripe is not present on either icon. Then towards the center bottom of the screen, there are several icons. There's participants. You can actually click on that. Actually, you'll see a little number at the top above the icon. It tells you how many people are participating in the meeting. If you click on the icon, it's going to open up a panel over on the right hand side of your screen, and it's going to show you a list of all the participants. And you can turn that on and off by just clicking that participants button. There's also a chat. So if you want to be able to type to individuals or you want to type a message to the entire group, you can do that. And anybody else in that meeting will be able to see it if you're typing to everyone. Or you can actually use a little drop down next to the chat box that opens up and chat to a particular person. In the middle, a share screen. So if you have something else other than your own face that you want to show people, you can actually bring that up on your device. You can click on share screen. And if you're a participant, this is going to send a request to the person who's actually hosting the meeting to allow that. And if they allow it, then whatever you are showing on your screen will actually show up and everybody in the meeting will be able to see it. Recording is another option. Again, if you're not the host of the meeting, it's going to send a request to the host to allow it or not allow it. But if you are allowed, you can actually record the meeting and it's going to save the meeting like a video that you could go back and view later. And then reactions, they're pretty simple. It's a little section that will open up and you can click on a little thumbs up or thumbs down symbol to sort of indicate how you're feeling about whatever's going on in the meeting at that time. Over on the bottom right hand of the screen, you have a see, you'll see the words leave meeting and you can just click on that and it will actually end your participation in the meeting before it actually ends. So if you just want to hang up, that's where you go to do it. Now back at the uh, actual participant screen uh, where you're actually seeing or the gallery view where you're seeing a picture of yourself and others, if you mouse over your own face or icon, a little symbol will pop up on the top right. Uh, number one, there's a mute button, but next to that is three little dots. And if you click on the three little dots, there are some extra options that you can access. A little window like this will pop up. And of course, again, you can mute yourself, you can start video or stop video, 
but there's also the option to rename. And you'll notice your name appears at the bottom right hand of your little window in that meeting. And you can go in there and change your name if you want to. If you're not showing video, what Zoom does is shows an icon that's associated with your profile. And if you don't have anything, it's just going to be blank. But if you want to add a picture or change the picture, you can edit the profile picture straight from here. There's a hide non-video participants option. And really what that does in gallery view, it saves space. So if there's a bunch of people in the meeting that are not using video, all you're doing is seeing a bunch of blank black squares in their place. You can click on hide non-video participants and it allows the other windows of the participants who are using video to become larger on the screen. Hide self view, it's sort of similar to the hide non-video -partic participants. It's gonna hide your own view the view of yourself from your own screen. It, it doesn't hide you from other participants. It only hides your box from yourself and, it, and thereby it saves screen space and it allows the pictures of the other people participating to become larger. And that is all you really need to know to get started with Zoom as a participant. And check back with us later for more videos. And thank you very much.